Hi everyone, and welcome to an annotated solution to the first invention task in Math 103. The purpose of the invention task was to have you try to generate a solution to a problem you haven't formally been instructed on yet. This problem involved the concept of apportionment. You were given the task of dividing 250 seats among six different states based on their respective populations. What made this problem a little bit challenging was the very large population sizes of each state along with the, the unknown. So some of the things you might have thought about as you solved it could have been ratios, proportions, um, division. You know, there's lots of different things that you might have thought about. So I'd like to just highlight some critical features of the problem solution. There are a couple ways we can solve it. As you'll see in this unit, there are multiple apportionment methods available for you to use. But for today's lesson, I'm going to stick to Hamilton's method, which is one of the earliest apportionment methods there is. And in doing so, we can take a close look at some of the key features you learn in this video set. Um, so the premise of this problem, just to remind you, was large country, six states. Each state has a large number of people. And there were 250 seats available to uh, govern the, the country. And your task was to figure out how many seats to go to each state so that it's, it's fair. Now, one of the first things you want to do is calculate the total population, you know, how many people are there in this new uh, country, regardless of their state. So if we quickly add up all these numbers, um, the total number of people is 12,500,000. About And that's one of the most critical things you want to do right away in an apportionment problem is how many people are we dealing with total. After we have that, we calculate what we call the standard divisor. As you saw in the videos, the standard divisor is a very important part of an apportionment problem. And that is the total number of people divided by the number of seats available. And this standard divisor gives us a sort of a ratio, a, a, an ideal. How many seats would represent, how many, how many people would represent each seat? Or, you know, how many items are represented by one seat, whether it's legislative seat, seat on a bus, or what have you. So in this case, we have 12,500,000 people and 250 seats available. So if we divide those numbers out, we can figure out how many people are represented by one legislative seat. So real quick, we just you know, make ourselves a ratio here and divide these values out. And you can just, at this point, grab a calculator or go to your favorite uh, search engine to determine the standard divisor, which is 50,000. And the meaning of this number in context is that one seat represents 50,000 people. That's a very critical attribute of an apportionment problem. One seat represents 50,000 people. So if you figured that out in your invention process, that's great. This is a very important part of any apportionment problem. No matter which method you use, you usually want to start here because this will help us calculate our standard quotas, which I'll describe on the next slide. Okay. So I sorted my information here in a table. I did not give you a table for the invention task. I wanted you to come up with a way to solve it. Um, perhaps you did, maybe you didn't, but if you didn't, a table is a great way to organize all the information. So here I listed each state's population in thousands. Notice I, I saved a little space by noting the population was in thousands, and I kept um, smaller numbers here, but they all mean the same thing. We still have our same 12,500,000 total people. We have 250 uh, seats available. And our standard divisor we previously calculated was 50,000. Standard quota is the next critical feature of an apportionment problem. The standard quota is found 
by taking each state's population and dividing it by the standard divisor. And the tricky thing about standard quotas are that very often they have decimals in them. And I went ahead and calculated all these for you already. If you divide the population of state A by the standard divisor of 50,000, you end up with a standard quota of 32.92. And again, that's um, how many seats they should get ideally. Now, I can't award a state 0.92 of a seat. That's just not possible. So that um, that's why we call it the apportionment problem. We were stuck with this awkward thing with the decimals. Same thing on state B. I divided state B's population by the standard divisor, and I got 138.72. And you can see that the process was repeated all throughout that row. And the nice thing about standard quotas are if you add them all up, they will add up to total number of seats, 250. But we have a problem. We can't award decimal numbers of seats. So that's where um, if you are on a, a good track with inventing the solution to this problem, you kind of get stuck here. Like, what do you do next? How do you handle this decimal issue? We can't just assign a decimal number of seats to a state. So one approach to doing this, and there are a bunch, but um, one common approach is to round every number down to what we call a lower quota. Okay, so we can call this row lower quota or round down. And this, you know, takes away some seats. We actually end up losing four seats in the process. We go from 250 to 246. And that's by um, all those fractional parts that we rounded down. They total up to about four seats that are lost. How do we handle those four lost seats? We simply look at the fractional parts or the decimals that we took away from every state. So if I just focus on the decimals... I'm going to list them here so we have a clean comparison. Okay, so we have 0 0.92, 0 0.72, 0 0.08, 0 0.82, 0 0.70, and 0.76. These are the four seats we were short by. Hamilton's method says let's uh, reward those states with very high decimal values with an extra seat. So if we look at our values, um, state A has the highest decimal or fractional part, so state A will get an additional seat. The second highest would be state D at 0.82, so that state under Hamilton's method would get an additional seat. State E, state F rather, would get an additional seat because of the 0.76. And last but not least, state B with 0.72 is a decimal, will also get an additional seat. So our final Hamilton apportionment, we're going to give state A 33 seats, its original 32 plus one extra. We're going to give state B 139 seats, its original 138 plus one. State C unfortunately had a low decimal, so state C does not get any extra seats, keeps only three. State D will get 42 seats, with the one extra. State E um, doesn't get any extra seats, so state E will stay at 13, and state F will get an extra seat and will go up to 20. And these numbers, if we add them all up, do make our initial total of 250. So we've, we've solved the problem. Okay, so this is one of a couple of ways. As you'll see as we move through this unit, you'll learn a couple more. But Hamilton's method is one such way to give every state a fair number of seats, yet uh, solve this issue of the decimal and the apportionment problem. So I hope you were able to think back to your own solution and now kind of wrap your head around it all together and understand the importance of the standard divisor, standard quota, and doing something logical with the fractional parts. Thank you for watching.